That's fascinating. It seems like a birth is almost reprogramming the yeah. our immune system. And I, I wanted yeah. to talk about infertility. Uh, what are your current studies, things that you've been looking into of what causes infertility? I know it's multifactorial where it could be coming from the women due to age. It could be coming from men where they have a decreased sperm count or mobility issues. I think you mentioned something on the show about EMF related to our phones. So yeah. what do you think is happening in our current world when, when it comes to fertility and why are we having such a decrease in the ability to get pregnant? So there's a, it's a great question. I uh, will try to make it as simple as possible. First off, yes, you listed a couple of really important things there. If you're not ovulating, it's going to be hard to get pregnant, but many women are still ovulating and they have seem to have a sort of perfect bill of health and they can't figure out what's going on. Uterine polyps, which are like moles that grow inside the uterine cavity, fibroids, regardless of their location, but especially if they're in the endometrio endometrial cavity, um, scarring in the tubes can cause tubal factor. You can have a misshapen uterine cavity, like a uh, uterine septum. You could have thyroid issues. You could have any other any other endocrine issues, including the adrenals, which is something that is often overlooked by us OBGYNs. There are so many factors there. Um, and if you're a little bit older, the most likely cause of a miscarriage um, and by the way, the causes of miscarriage and causes of, of fertility challenges are often one and the same. Um, <clears throat> recurrent, recurrent miscarriages, for example, could just be that you don't have a healthy corpus luteum, which is what results after the follicle is released. So you may need to boost your progesterone with chastberry or even supplementing with progesterone. I mean, there are so many factors that can lead in the woman's body to infertility challenges. But the reason we have this long list with women is that we've always put the burden on women. If you can't get pregnant, it's, it must be her fault. What's wrong with you? I mean, this is something that we've even seen in the media. However, the data also suggest that men are responsible 40 to 50% of the time. So if you look at the range on our semen analysis, the range is like, I can't even remember. It's like two, 20 to 200 million sperm per ejaculate. That is a wide range of normal. So if you were at 21 million per ejaculate, they would say you have a normal semen analysis. But if you guys are struggling to get pregnant, I'd like, I'd like to jack that number up as high as I can get it, right? We want as many opportunities here as possible. The other thing you may see on a seam analysis that people um, probably know about is motility, which is how fast are these little guys swimming? And the way that you do a seam, a seam analysis is quite crude. You take a, a drop of, of semen, which you've just gifted to the urology clinic. They put it on a microscope slide and they look at it. And they literally counts per, within my view, how many of these guys are there? How many are swimming? I mean, it's complicated because they have to break it into like little quadrants. But the point being that um, if you don't have an, enough well-formed um, modal sperm with a flagella that's just flapping in the breeze, then um, you're going to have a problem, right? You're going to have a problem. So we can boost that up. There's another thing, leukocytes, which reflects some sort of inflammation, not necessarily infection, but an inflammatory process there because the immune system is selling white blood cells or leukocytes to that area. So on the semen analysis, if I see increased RBCs, um, um, but more specifically, if I see increased leukocytes, then there's something going on there inflammatory. And I would suspect that's probably, again, related back to the gut, based back to some sort of chronic low-grade inflammation that's going on in the body. And if we can help decrease that and boost your semen analysis, any of those numbers, I, I mean, dropping leukocytes, but boosting counts, morphology, motility, then you guys are naturally going to have a better chance. Like It's not rocket science. It's just the reality. So I oftentimes start with the man, actually especially when the woman is, you know, has a general clean, generally a clean bill of health. We get the cell phones out. We do all the things I mentioned before. And then we are simultaneously trying to dial in whatever it is that might be impacting her health. There's one thing that I found that is really common, but it's often undiagnosed is normal hemoglobin, normal hematocrit, but this person's chronically tired. They don't have the energy or the motivation in the morning. They have to drink a lot of coffee. So the first place I look is the adrenals, but I also want to look at their iron studies. And you guys are used to seeing these. If you actually see a low ferritin, a low um, total iron binding or a high total iron binding capacity, the heme isn't saturated fully. We may have an iron deficiency issue that hasn't yet presented as iron deficiency anemia. So you can add um, acid to your food. It can just be apple cider vinegar and that helps absorb heme iron. But then we're going to be increasing your organ meats. We're going to be increasing your shellfish like oysters and mussels, the bivalves. Um, bone broth, fermented cod liver oil, eggs. That is like all the nutrition you'd ever find in a prenatal vitamin. You don't even have to buy a prenatal vitamin. Just eat nature's multivitamins and you'll be fine. Dialing those things in, 
Um, the adrenals I mentioned, you can get what's called a Dutch test, which is a for a full cycle, you're collecting pee on a stick and they check for metabolites from the gonads of the hormones from the gonads and from the adrenals. And it looks at how the liver is breaking those things down. And then once we see that full report, it's beautiful. We can actually dial in just these specific SIP, SIP uh, you know, 2D6, 3, 4A, these different um, uh, enzymatic processes that help to metabolize and excrete these hormones. So once we've you know looked at all of that, then it just comes down to kind of patience and reverence for the process and working on the mental, emotional, and spiritual things as well. In my fertility program, they're meeting with an exercise specialist, a functional nutritionist, a Chinese medicine doc, a metaphysical counselor, an art therapist, um, a, a psychic medium. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people that they meet with and it has worked 100% of the time, which is um, I'm sort of shy about saying that because I don't have the capacity to take enough people, but it's not that hard. It's just looking upstream at what the cause was as opposed to just starting to inject you with synthetic hormones, or I should say hormone analogs in order to force the body to get pregnant. If we do that, that's fine. You're going to get that, that, that great baby that you've always wanted. But IVF is an independent risk factor for virtually every pregnancy complication. And it's most likely not because you're old or because the IVF is dangerous. It's because there's some reason upstream where you've been having these fertility issues. We've hijacked your, your physiology, forced you to carry a baby, even though the body was telling us, alarm, alarm, this is not a good time based on our resources, not a good time to be growing a child. Oh, I gotta go. I've been working, told them, please don't hit my phone. I'm in my zone, bruh, just leave me alone. Was on the road, but I swear I'm coming home. Now the drinks on me, 